Hey, everybody. Welcome to Netflix Life, a streaming TV podcast from Fansided. I'm Bryce Olin. I'm here with my co-host, Cody Schultz. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we're doing all the May 2023 releases on Netflix. Um, it's going to be an interesting month. It's not quite as jam-packed as April was nor is it as big as June and July are going to be for Netflix. Um, But we've got some other stuff to talk about. Uh, How about we talk about Outer Banks, Cody? There's a new rumor going around. Yeah, so this one's really interesting. It's not about the show. I should set that up beforehand. I wish it was about the show. We we really don't have like too, too much updates yet just on season four other than we know it's happening. But beyond that, I feel like it's a lot of question marks for timing and everything else. But there is a new rumor. Um from a popular celebrity blind they're, they're known for blind items uh demoy demoy however you want to say it whatever your heart we call feels it demoy right. <laughs> is more fun to say <laughs> um but there's a new rumor that a member of the cast uh the one of the stars of the outer banks is screen testing for james gunn's superman uh they don't give any insight on who it could be they don't even 100 percent specify whether they're screen testing for the role of superman although that's what's kind of assumed um i'm really it's this is intriguing to me i don't know how quite to feel i think the biggest thing is i don't know who they might be talking about um because like i'm trying to imagine chase stokes as superman i love him as john b on outer banks but i don't know if i could see him as superman per se i'm with you i i mean I don't know. Don't hate us, Chase. We love you. We love Outer Banks. But yeah, I don't know. That it's just too weird. I don't anyone is Superman. I feel like that it's one of those roles where it's like Henry Cavill made sense to me at the time and seeing him as Super Pan- Superman <laughs> makes sense and I just don't know if anyone looks like that anymore. So it's it's hard to imagine. Um I think that I I think we have to assume that it's him. I think that he's probably like the biggest uh male star of outer banks i mean i don't know if that's actually true it seems like it's true he seems like he has the profile he's about the right age for the role um all i know and i told you this yesterday when i saw this uh if outer banks ends because he becomes superman and has to film for 10 months out of the year and can't do the show anymore riots i can't do it i won't watch it i'll boycott i will (laughs) Yeah, I think that's been my struggle because I really would love to see Rudy take on the role of the Human Torch. But then I'm like, hmm, if he gets cast in a Marvel movie, that's going to really take up a lot of his time with filming. And then I'm like, what does that mean for Outer Banks? I don't want the show to end. I don't want us to lose any of the key cast members. Um, You know, the one thing we were talking, of course, Chase comes first to mind. I almost wonder who else could be in like because they don't specify. And they, I, there wasn't even really mm-hmm. any hints in the blind item about like, it, yeah. you know like leading into john b or something like a, a word play or something so i'm like could it be another member of the cast too like drew starkey i almost could feel would be a little bit more on point like i could envision him a little bit more than chase stokes in the role um even jonathan davis would be interesting as like a clark there but the age thing is the other thing i'm questioning because i know james gunn's been up in the air about like what age range and when exactly his superman's going mm-hmm. to be like at in his life But I think they've been mentioning like at least mid thirties. So I think that would be interesting just to see where we put some of them. Although granted a lot of the Outer Banks cast, they're playing teens, but they're closer (laughs) or in their thirties. So um, I mean, it definitely would line up age wise, but like someone like Jonathan Davis, of course, is he's 23, one of the younger members of the cast. So that would be the interesting thing there to see how it would play out. Yeah. Or I mean, Madeline Klein, I could definitely see. I mean, I think that she's already been in Knives Out 2. Uh, could definitely uh, join the Marvel or DC universe, I feel, in the future. Just with, like, her, like, stardom and talent level. Um, it just seems like the natural, like, I don't know, progression, I guess, for actors and actresses. Like, as they get bigger, they get swooped up by, you know, Disney, Warner Bros. And all bets are off from there how like high they can climb in the ranks of like the acting world you know yeah and i think it's becoming i mean it's still common practice a lot of like the actors you hear hear about how the reason they're still flocking to those superhero movies especially marvel is because that's where they can get their biggest paycheck like Mm -hmm. no one is competing with marvel in terms of the amounts that you know 
people can make it for some of these roles, especially if they go on to become franchise players. And so it's like, of course, why wouldn't you chase that kind of a role like that's going to give you not just this huge platform, but also a decent payout? Because, of course, that's what you're all, you know, everyone you work for yeah. your money. So it's like yeah. you're going to go after the roles that, that are going to pay you the best. And so it's like it makes sense that Marvel is still able to pay those higher fees. And of course, like indie studios or streamers even. So it, it makes sense that there's still so many big names flocking to that. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. It's funny because in that same Netflix vein of like stars, Jacob Elordi is another one whose name keeps coming up mm-hmm. a lot with the Superman movie, a, a lot of fan casting. And I that one I could see a little bit more like just in seeing so many fan art variants of si- imagining him as Superman. He definitely, I think, could look the part. Um, I don't I have much like to base background wise because I haven't watched Euphoria. So I kind of have the uh, kissing, kissing booth dude. movies. <laughs> and those I don't know if those are definitely like the best, you know, options to look at and be like oh well this you know they're great movies i enjoyed them but they're not like clark kent (laughs) yeah they're not oscar nominated you know caliber movies uh but i could see him being in the mix there if if that was to come something i I could envision him more than maybe someone from outer banks yeah that makes sense too i think that going back a little bit like just the consistency of the work too i feel like is like if you're superman i don't know how many what James Gunn and them are going to do with with the role but you're probably looking at three to four movies right if you hit it big and then that's consistent money through I mean at least you're working for the next four years rather than like maybe not I don't know uh but yeah Jacob Elordi I could definitely see there's like I don't know there's more people I feel like that I could see than Chase Stokes for sure (laughs) in, in the role not only for the selfish reason that I want Outer Banks to go on forever. Um, yeah, it's I guess very I, true. I mean, we've been talking about Superman and Henry Cavill. We've got some big Witcher news as well. So, I don't know. I can't even remember when the last season came out. Was it Christmas 2022? Mm-hmm. But we've got the Witcher season three release dates. Dates with the S on the end just dropped because Netflix is splitting it into two parts. We've got the first five episodes. June 29th, the last three episodes, six through eight, are coming July 27th. Very similar to how they did Stranger Things season five, Ozark season four. What's the other one that got split recently? You, you season four. That's right. I don't know. How are you? We've talked about it a little bit, but uh, not a fan. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's funny. I, I was just on our sister podcast, Take the Black, and The Witcher news came up and Mm. i i roasted it i just (laughs) i think it's a major miss i just don't think every show is made to do these split seasons um stranger things was definitely an exception that it worked really well for because the episode seven just ended with such a great cliffhanger moment and the duffer brothers kind of have a little bit more creative liberty so they kind of plan of like okay we're good we can do a split here the episodes were also really, really long when you look at like those final episodes of the season. So it made sense to do a little bit different approach there. With The Witcher, I think it's more in the boat of like you um, in that I don't know that it's going to help the show by splitting it into two seasons because you season four really took a hit and I think suffered creatively by them splitting the episodes because just as the momentum had started to build and you were getting to like the heart of the story, it paused you had to wait a month and it just it didn't have like the same pack like the first five episodes I didn't enjoy them as much on their own but when I looked at them as a whole with the back half of the season it worked and I think if it had been split that season would have been better received among critics and fans just because they killed the momentum right in the middle it just wasn't meant for that split and I worry that that could happen with The Witcher um is especially with having the five and three episodes split I'm like at that point you're only putting a month between the two batches too. like try the weekly format finally. Like, yeah, if you're going to just release them, it's just such a weird, I don't like the, if you're going to split a season up, put some time in between it is my thing. Like make there be at least some kind of build up. Don't just be like, you have to wait a month. Yeah. That's the, I, I think that they're getting to like, what is the best like viewing experience, I guess. And 
I don't think that in all cases it's like the binge watch model of like we have one day to watch all 10 episodes because like that's I don't know it's really easy to get burnt out like that there's only a few shows that I will like watch six episodes of in like one day you know um Stranger Things is one of them I would would and did do that so uh but in terms of the like the the best view it like make it 12 episodes and do six and six where there's like a clear two stories or like one longer arc i feel like the five in three is very odd i'm curious to know like did the writers know that there was a break gonna be a break after five like leading into the the last two because that's the real like if it if there's not and you'd miss on those first five who's gonna tune in for the last three and I feel like that that's going to overall, like, we know how particular Netflix is about, like, the numbers and uh, not just, like, the overall, like, total viewing numbers, specifically how many, like, what's the percentage of people who watch one to, you know, watch the first episode and then also watch the finale within, like, a given period. I don't know, like, if they change their metrics or if it's, like, a week or two weeks, but we know that that's, like, you know, the creators have talked about it. Netflix has let us in a little bit on their process of how they do that. We already know The Witcher is renewed, so it's probably not that big of a deal. But uh, for those other shows that are like on the chopping block or getting to the end of their run, it just makes it a little bit disjointed, which is like the opposite of what you want as like a viewer. You know, like I don't want to have to wait four weeks if I've just watched the first five and like there's, you, you know something happening so I don't know I just don't know if it flies honestly <laughs> yeah and the other thing too is this isn't to shade the show just because I'm an outsider looking at I don't really know what the mm-hmm. fandom is but I feel like the overall interest in this one like the buzz isn't quite as big as it used to be like at the start um, and so I worry that the split season could harm it just because I, I wonder like how many people will realize oh it's coming back in two batches or will even care or I don't know. It just it feels like such a weird and interesting choice. If you wanted to split it, they could have put a little bit. It's even take a Stranger Things approach. Like we have another stretch of, you know, the holiday granite, you know, the 4th of July holiday, I think, falls on like a Tuesday Mm -hmm. this year. So maybe like that wouldn't work this year. But like they could have done a split and done like May and July, June and August, done a little bit more. That way there builds that tension and buzz. Because just putting less than a month between the two batches is like, what's the point? You could just drop it all at once, let fans watch it. Um, and see, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it does affect the momentum. I think the biggest thing, the biggest question will be, does season five end in a way that justifies the split? Because if there's yeah. not like really a big cliffhanger, then I think a lot of fans are going to be like, what's the point? Like, is this, was that it? Are there actually more episodes? Yeah. Do I even care? Like that, that's going to be the the selling point is how strong is episode five. And what's really interesting too, that you kind of mentioned was like the, of the shows to do the split with is the Witcher, the best one. Cause it's already so polarizing. Like the, I feel like of the big Netflix, like tentpole franchises that they're trying to like get off the ground. The Witcher probably is that like the, like definitely more ah, how do I say it It just has worse reviews I think that that's just like to put it plainly so like if it misses it just gives people more ammunition and I know that's not necessarily what it's all about and like the people who like this show are probably going to watch anyways but to make it it just makes it harder I feel like for like you need the more common fans to like post these really big numbers um when which we've seen the witcher do before but with like how season two went then they released blood or is it blood origin i think that's what mm-hmm. it was called the witcher blood origin on around christmas time that really didn't move the needle at all in terms of uh and, and was actively like panned so it's just that it's it's a interesting way to do it we do know that this is henry cavill's last go round i don't know what else to say uh as uh Geralt so it'll be interesting he'll be replaced with Liam Hemsworth for season four it'll be interesting to see I think a lot of people will tune in to figure out how he leaves things in like his last episodes but other than that like it's 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 a rough time and 
sometimes these summer releases too, like I know the 4th of July weekend is we've seen really big things with Netflix. Um, end of July has worked out for like Outer Banks was a huge release at the end of July for season two. Um, Virgin River is always released in July and that's very popular. But in terms of like The Witcher being released in summer, this is the first time we've seen a seen one outside of like the holiday season. And I'm wondering, is that going to hurt the show anyway, you know, with just people not being used to seeing it during that time frame. So I don't know. It'll be interesting for sure. Yeah, I think they I I think it's just got so much working against it this season that the split mm-hmm. was a bad decision. Um, Because like you mentioned, this we already know that this is Henry Cavill's final final season on the show there's a lot of controversy around that a lot of people saying oh i'm gonna leave when he leaves because he was the one fighting to keep it you know accurate to the source material and that there's a lot of questions of is that the big factor that played into why he's leaving the show and i think when you already have such a polarizing fan base right now just because of knowing that change is coming and the uncertainty of what's what's to come i don't know if doing like a split is like the best move to throw on like doing something new that way too uh, and I also wonder like how it's going to affect the momentum too, like of of his final run as the character. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I hope the fans enjoy the season. I hope the season goes out in a way like there's still a lot of unknowns of how they're going to handle the recast and like the handing of the passing of the baton um, with Henry Cavill and Liam Hemsworth. But hopefully it's a good season for the Cavill fans and just for the Witcher fans who've been with it from day one. But I don't know. I'm really curious to see how the numbers do. Ditto. We've got more summer stuff to talk about, too. This is another one from Dumois, or Dumois, as we call it. Uh, Stranger Things Season 5 filming. This is gets us more excited than The Witcher, I think. <laughs> yeah, so the big rumor, and again, want to stress this is just a rumor, kind of like a blind item, um, is that filming is supposed to start in on May 16th in the Atlanta area. There's one person who said it'll be, you know, the basically the start of regular filming but then there was another source that said it's going to be with a limited number of the cast members um and then it'll just kind of be the full cast will start late june july like coming together as the broader group which to me it makes sense if they were to start like with a smaller group just because a availability of the cast uh, i think that's been the biggest thing working against stranger things is as the popularity and as the years have gone by like its cast have become some of the most highly sought after actors and actresses So they're all very booked and busy now. Like it's not just Netflix and kind of in that limited bubble. That's the only thing they're doing. They're doing so many other big shows and movies. And so juggling those schedules is going to be interesting. But I think the thing I'm most curious to talk with you about and get your take on is what that's going to mean. If we're just going to be starting filming in mid-May, I don't know how that still translates for like summer 2024 release. Yeah, that's the tough part. And I mean, that's the thing that everyone wants to know, too. Like, I mean, obviously, we're concerned about the story and like are interested to find out how this is all going to end being the final season. But like, we also want to know when it's coming out. And I think that when the season ended last summer, that people kind of just assumed that summer 2024 was going to be the like time i mean the last two seasons season three came out summer 2019 i think and then season four obviously summer 2022 um with it started in may and got the split season for the july 4th weekend um finale basically but yeah i i think that if you just look at like overall timelines and how much how many effects that they'll be doing and like the the graphics teams that in visual artists that will be working on this show based on where we left off with like the upside down now just being in Hawkins is I mean that I feel like that that's got to be like a huge concern so normally they film six eight months usually uh, for these things the last season was interrupted with like COVID and all of those restrictions that were placed on how many people could be in certain scenes and that kind of thing that made it a lot harder um but yeah, I, I would expect about a month per episode minimum on this show. So it's eight. They they pretty much have confirmed the last season is going to be eight episodes. So eight months from July is doing math in my head, like spring of next year. There's like no way that they're going to go end in the spring. Three months later, we're out in July. Like, I think that we're going to need a lot of time for post on this show, you know. 
Yeah. And the other interesting thing, too, is we've also got this like question mark of what's coming with the looming writer strike and how that's going to affect a lot of these shows. Absolutely. So when you factor that could very much become a potential that could slow down production even more. And so it's I'm really certain I want it in 2024, but I think I've already started mentally preparing myself that it might be 2025, which is just crazy to think of another long break between the seasons again. Um, but it's just like you said, with the show of this scope, like the number of effects they do. I mean, we talk like wasn't the budget for the like, episodes like weren't they in the millions? Like, what was it like 200 something? I want to say like really, really some uh, like crazy yeah. number. I heard 30 million an episode and there were nine episodes in season four. So that's yeah, almost $300 million for the season. So, yeah. So, I mean, this, I can only imagine Netflix is going to definitely go all in to make this big, you know, this final season as big as they can. It's always been kind of their flagship show. I know they had a lot of hits before stranger things came around as well that got, you know, like Emmy nominations and kind of put them on the map, Mm -hmm. but stranger things is really that show that really redefined Netflix and made them, a player in this industry of like people being like, Oh, they can actually produce these shows that millions are going to talk about and that are going to become like pop culture phenomenons of just these characters and the stories are so rooted in into everything now. Um, and so I know Netflix is going to want to make, and the Duffers, like they're going to want to make sure this season is done how they want it done. Like we heard the rumors in like editing things like to the very last minute before mm-hmm. season four even dropped, like, And I understand that perfectionist of wanting to make sure you get it right and stick the landing because final seasons are so hard to do. Um, I feel like it's so rare for a big show to go out on top and people actually be like, I love that ending. Uh, It really is such a rare occasion. It feels like, like if it's a show that's gone a while that fans love, usually the finales, there's not much middle ground. It's either people loved it or hated it. And so I think that makes the task like even more daunting for these creators. Yeah. And like, I mean, like I have tried to think about like how they're going to go with this season and they keep saying like, we're going back to the beginning. We're going back to like, we had a lot of stuff that we had for season two that didn't get on screen. Um, And like, but it's also going to be like the highest stakes ever. And Vecna will maybe be back and won't. I mean, I think it's pretty clear he's going to be back, but uh, like, that kind of stuff and like we're like we still don't know so many questions and so I'm like trying to think of how it's gonna end and they keep saying it's eight episodes and we're not gonna do you know as many supersized episodes but it's like okay well like I'm I'm picturing like a return of the king fade out ending we get like six different endings for all of these different characters because like at least they've said so far like we're not gonna get any new characters because if we were getting new characters I mean how could we even do it but uh yeah it's just going to be really interesting to see how it all goes down um what exactly happens i feel like with where they left things and it it, they kind of they didn't write themselves into a corner but like there's things that have to like happen now to get to like some resolution and it's gonna be challenging i think to do that in a way that like pleases everyone in like a normal amount of time and yeah, I'm also preparing myself. I think probably fall 2024 it has to be like the new prediction just based on if if filming does get started that late in the year, I can't see us, you know, getting starting production and getting a new season out in like one year, like 12 total months, you know? Like I think it's got to be at least 18, 15 to 18, you know? Yeah, and before we, we've got, of course, the May stuff to talk about, but we also should mention, speaking of Stranger Things, we did learn this month the first like spinoff, official spinoff was announced and it's an animated show. And right. that's basically all we know. Like we don't know <laughs> when it's coming. We don't know what character it will center around, like what the story will be. Literally that it's just the Stranger Things animated spinoff is coming. So it is interesting to like see like there's obviously ongoing plans, which we they had hinted at there being plans to continue the franchise in new ways. But that's the first official news we got. And It was kind of an announcement without an announcement, if that makes any sense, just because there is so little known about it. But hey, at least it's something. And we know the world's going to live on in some way once the show ends. Yeah, I'm curious, because like, is this the spinoff that, uh, you know, they said that like Finn Wolfhard guessed what the spinoff would be. And like, 
is this it? I, I'm very curious to find out if this was the spinoff they had planned or are we getting more live action stuff? I know they've talked about, like, there's been a lot of rumors about, like, a spinoff about Eleven, but those have been shot down, I think, by the Stranger Things, like, official writer's Twitter account, right? Didn't that happen? Am I dreaming that? <laughs> yeah, no, somebody started, I can't remember what the initial source was, but somebody, like, put it out there that Millie Bobby Brown had turned down um, starring in an That's Eleven right. spinoff, and they're like, no, this wasn't a thing. Um, and so, yeah, the writer's room, like, they came out and shut that down very quickly of, like, no, this wasn't like a thing. She didn't walk away from money just because she didn't want to do a show. Like this was just nothing but a rumor. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I, Cause we had that ongoing buzz about like, well, Finn figured it out, but we're not going to tell everybody what Finn figured out. And he's not allowed to yeah. tell anyone. So it's like, is that what he figured out? Or is this something separate? I think the only thing that there was a rumor connected because I, I don't even remember it was the Netflix geeked account or um, one of the other Netflix brands. But mm -hmm. one of them used um, an image or a meme or something of Erica to react. And so yeah. people are like, oh, is this a subtle hint that Erica could be maybe the central character? So I think that's really the only running theory people have, which is very, very thin, just going off of a reaction meme. Um, but who knows? Maybe that could end up being where it goes. That would be great. In, sign me up. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, last month, last May, we got the first episodes of Stranger Things season four we can confirm Stranger Things season five episodes not coming in May. And the list, honestly, if you compare it even to April to last May, a little bit thin. There's a, there's some good stuff. But um, so I'm just going to read through the list of every Netflix show and movie coming in May 2023. We've got Asterix, Asterix and Obelix, The Middle Kingdom. I might have mispronounced that. But we got Barbecue Showdown season two, Black Knight season one, Blood and Gold. The Great British Baking Show Junior Series 7, Fubar Season 1, Jewish Matchmaking Season 1, The Mother, Mulligan Season 1, Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story, Queer Eye Season 7, Royal Teen, Princess Margaret, Selling Sunset Season 6, The Ultimatum, Queer Love Season 1, Tin and Tina, Exo Kitty Season 1, Yakitori Soldiers of Misfortune Season 1, Young, Famous, and African Season 2. And just as a reminder, these are all the Netflix original shows and movies coming in May. There are also some great comedy specials, documentaries, family editions, and acquired titles that are coming as well. Um, so, Cody, of that list, what are we talking about? What's what's on your... What are you most excited to watch in May? Yeah, so this list, I feel like it's a repeat of, of April. A lot of Season 1s, which is mm -hmm. going to be interesting. I don't know if any of these season ones for the most part have that potential maybe to be a night agent breakout hit uh but i do think there are a couple and i think that of course the biggest one that does have a lot of buzz going into the month is actually ironically coming right out of the gate on may 4th which is queen charlotte a bridgerton series or bridgerton story it's interesting to me that that's how they're billing it and all like the announcements they're not calling it like season one or anything so they're very much keeping it up in the air of is this going to be a one-off limited series or could there be like a revisit of the story down the line, which I don't know. I think it could easily go either way um, just because there is such a rich history there, but I'm really excited about this one. I've seen the episodes already. And of course I can't dive into spoilers, but the embargo is lifted so we can react. And I will say it's, it's even better than I thought it was. Like I went into it with high expectations because I enjoyed Bridgerton and that's why I was really excited to look into this one. But they do a really great job of telling the story that, to a degree, we kind of know already because they touch on some of these story plots in the future in the Bridgerton shows. Like, we know the history with, like, the Queen and, and King George. But it's it's interesting to get to see how exactly it plays out. And the cast is amazing. The actress who plays uh, the young lady, Dan Barry in particular, such a scene stealer, um, just just like the characters in Bridgerton. So I shouldn't be surprised. Like that character is so fun and she just steals the scenes. Um, I really think Bridgerton fans are going to enjoy this one. The nice thing too, is it does a, a great job of balancing the story. We do have some nods to future, like the present timeline ish. I should say, cause there's a little bit of up in the air of trying to figure out when it fits in the narrative for Bridgerton, 
but we do which was that was something confirmed from the very, very beginning that we'd get to see some of the actresses back uh, of course the the actress who plays queen charlotte lady danbury and violet bridgerton all reprise their role nothing new there that we knew but it's really just great it's an interesting how they kind of intertwine the narratives yeah i'm excited about this one i think it's been mm, hasn't been so long. I think it's only been about a year since Bridgerton season two, but it's one of the biggest shows on Netflix. And we often get, you know, requests about on social media or wherever, just comments about when the new season's coming. So it's great that we're getting some Bridgerton. Uh, It's not season three, but it's still, uh, in some ways, I think that it'll be more refreshing to do it this way and, and to get like, basically just to spin it off and do a prequel series about it like a very popular character uh, i think fans will like it i think that it, it hasn't really gotten much buzz yet i know like people who are locked in about netflix and know what's coming obviously are excited about it but in terms of like the mainstream public i think it could be one of those word of mouth shows that like kind of spreads like wildfire and like two months later we're like oh, okay it makes sense why that show did what it did right <laughs> Yeah, and they did an amazing job, too, with the casting. Um, the actress and actor who play Young Queen, uh, Charlotte, Young Queen, George, India, and Corey, they have such amazing chemistry on screen. It really does give you that, like, vibe back to to season, well, both seasons. I shouldn't say just season one with with uh, Phoebe and Reggae John Page and, and the Simon and, and Daphne storyline, because they the thing that this this franchise has done so well is casting actors and actresses who really do have such great chemistry that it really does pull you in and helps tell the story and they've done it again with india and Corey, who just are phenomenal in the two roles um there's one episode in particular that's just it was such a unique way to tell the story and kind of peel back some of the layers and i think fans are just going to really enjoy this this series and if it does end up being a limited series and it is a one-off, it tells a really great story within the six episodes. Uh, and that's the other thing. It is only six episodes, so it will kind of leave you wanting more. Uh, but the good thing is they are longer, just like Bridgerton has. Like They're not just like 40 minutes, 42. They're a little bit on the longer side, which does help it make it feel like it's a longer series, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this one's going to really help bridge the gap because like you said, we don't know when Bridgerton season three is coming just yet. I'm really thinking it's probably going to be coming in December of this year, fall, maybe at the earliest, just because they just recently had wrapped filming. They've got to get in post-production. It might not look like a show that you would think like has a bunch of special effects, but there really are so many details that go into bringing the show to life that they're going to need some months to get through post-production. So I think it's a perfect kind of mid-mark because we got Bridget in season two and I believe it was April of last year, mm-hmm. uh, maybe March. And so we're right about that year mark. And so give something to look forward. I almost want to see more of these stories, like revisit other characters from the Bridgerton series yeah. and kind of tell their tale before we met the characters. Cause I think it could be something really interesting. Views should be, in, I'm, I'm curious to see where this one does in terms of like viewership. Yeah. I think that, I mean, both Bridgertons, I think are top five on the English language, uh, net, like Netflix top 10. I, I think they're fourth and fifth, actually. Maybe they got, one of them got jumped by the night agent. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I think that this could definitely crack the top 10 um, and beat out like Lucifer or Inventing Anna. Sorry, I know, love Lucifer, but it's right on the edge. It's number, it's like nine or 10. So yeah. Um. <laughs> something will beat it unfortunately that's just life uh but yeah no I I think that like you can't really go like with how popular the shows are like you can't really go wrong with looking like if Netflix isn't already looking at like what other characters can we do what about the first Bridgertons the mom and dad I don't remember what their names are but like I could see all of those um like really getting expanded and obviously with like Shonda Rhimes involved. I know that she's not like, she's an executive producer. I don't think that she's like uh, in, involved in like the day to day necessarily, but like, I don't know. She has a good team around her. She doesn't miss name one. I can't think of, I can't think of a bad Shonda Rhimes show. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I feel like these will just continue to be hits as they're cranked out. And I really do think you're right about Christmas or 
like the holiday season, maybe we get it at Thanksgiving or something like that. It does work really well, though. I feel like around that time of year when people have a little bit more time off or are looking for something to watch, um, it's not necessarily a family show, but adults watching those kinds of shows, like I, I, I just think that like doing that does nothing like releasing it in like September or whatever, it's going to do well still. But Netflix, we know really like, like strategically lines up releases with like holidays. And when you have a show like that, that's worked before and can work again, I think that that's probably what will happen. We know they're not in any rush to push out any type of content at all, (laughs) you know? Yeah. And I think that's something people forget sometimes because Bridgerton's first season really picked up like after the holiday season by the word of mouth because season one did drop on Christmas Day. But it was kind of I feel like it wasn't really almost until January of the next year that it really took off and exploded in the way that it did was because you had the people who were fans of this popular book series, fans of Shonda Rhimes, and they all, you know, of course, were tuning in on Christmas when it dropped and that Christmas holiday but then it was like the word of mouth, like other people talking about it. And we all know, you know, Reggae John Page blew up and just became like that. That show set his like career path on a completely different trajectory. Mm-hmm. And so it was one of those like slow burns. And so I think Christmas, fall in general would be a good timeline for it. Um, even if they wanted to do it around like Thanksgiving, that could be a good fit for it. Um, picking like a day where there's like a stretch where people can just take a weekend and binge the show. But Speaking of franchises, I think the other, interestingly, you go from Bridgerton to Exo Kitty, which is a spinoff of the To All the Boys franchise, which was movie franchise, which is the first time Mm -hmm. we've seen Netflix do this. Um, So it's kind of an interesting boat and a first for Netflix in that we're going to get to revisit this character that we saw across a series of movies that were Netflix originals. But she was always kind of one of the the background characters. Like, you know, the Mm -hmm. story was, of course, about Laura Jean and Peter. And so now we kind of get to see Kitty's story. And I think this one's going to be a popular one for a lot of fans. Yeah, so that drops May 18th, I believe. Yeah, May 18th. Um, Yeah, it's interesting that Netflix is doing this. I think that uh, those movies, I don't know, we I think that those were released before we like had the Netflix metrics that they were releasing weekly that we could kind of track. But I would imagine those are, you know, of of the teen movies that Netflix has made, probably one of the most popular. I mean, they made three of them. So I think that, and then are making a spinoff series. And I think that um, what was, so the, I don't think that this one is based on a book by Jenny Han, who wrote the To All the Boys books, but there was the Amazon show. Do you know what I'm talking about? It came out last summer. The Summer I Turned Pretty. That's it. Yep. That was a big hit mm-hmm. for Amazon. Got renewed for season two really quickly. Uh, also based on a book series. So I think that there's definitely a market for the, like these teen romantic shows and movies that, um, and, and I think that in this one, Kitty goes to South Korea. Is that right? Yeah. So the storyline, you are correct. I don't believe it's based on a book. So this will be like the first right. one where they kind of go off into like just expanding the universe through the show. Uh, but yeah, the premise is Kitty gets accepted into the school that her mom went to when she was in like her teenage years. Um, And so she travels across the globe to this, to attend this school. And basically it's her reuniting with the long distance boyfriend that we'd met in the movie franchise and kind of spins into this whole coming of age kind of storyline. I think it's going to be really, I, I think this could be a sleeper hit just though the to all the boys franchise was such a big, like you mentioned hit for Netflix and really was, kind of among their first big original movies that took off and kind of had this life of their own and people counting down the the months until each of the new sequels that came out and so I think it'll be fun I think we don't have any confirmation on who might you know pop up from the franchise Um, aside from of course the actress who plays Kitty will be back recurring uh, returning in the role we know the um the actor whose name I'm blanking on that plays their dad, he'll be back. So there'll be some familiar faces, but we don't know like whether we'll get to see like Laura Jane or, or Peter or, you know, any of the other side characters in the show. But I think that's part of the fun that'll draw fans in of like getting to see whether they have a cameo or catch up on any of those. 
the recruit star, Noah Centineo. <laughs> He'll be back. No, I'm just kidding. Don't quote me. I. How could they not? That's all I'm going to say. How could they not bring him back? I mean, we have phones. You could do a FaceTime, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, the one that we definitely, we need to see Lana back, of course. Yeah. Laura Jean. Uh-huh. Like, she's got to make some kind of, especially since Kitty's kind of what kickstarted her whole journey, like her trying to play matchmaker. Like, it's only fitting that at some point she's going to need to seek out like Laura Jean's advice. And yeah. I don't want it to be like a phone call where we don't get to see Lana at all. Like we need, they, they should make it happen. So fingers crossed. That'll be like one of the surprises for the show. Yeah. So that's May 18th. We've got a couple other ones. Uh, Fubar is another season one. Arnold is back in an action role. The thing that we've all been waiting to see. I mean, I, I, I don't know. That might be very popular. I could see action movies and action series are very popular on Netflix. If you just look at the top 10 and like track, like you get these like obscure 2011 action movies that have like a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes, but they're the number one movie on Netflix for the week. I feel this FUBAR feels like that. And then um, The Mother is another movie. Jennifer Lopez is in that one. I believe it's kind of an action movie maybe i can't remember exactly uh yeah i can tell you it's definitely not a rom-com i was yeah i'm like jennifer lopez the mother like (laughs) this sounds like it should be and yeah it's definitely not a rom-com um i can't remember what the exact premise is there but it yeah it'll be an interesting one but i think you're onto something with fubar i keep Mm -hmm. oh i keep overlooking that one just because it's not a show necessarily that i am excited for that i would necessarily be drawn to but I think it could be something and watch it be the sleeper hit of the month that just surprises us and explodes and gets, you know, renewed night agent style seven days after its release. <laughs> oh, my God. Arnold's back. Is he on Twitter? We got to make if he is, we got to uh, look and see what he's saying about the show. Um, <laughs> what are, we've got a few other ones. The ultimatum queer love. So the ultimatum, I think, was from last year they did. Uh, and this is like the spinoff second season of. Or I guess it's a spinoff of its own. It's its own thing now. Um, but that'll be interesting. That Love is Blind was very chaotic last season. Um, the Ultimatum, when the first season came out, also very chaotic. Uh, any of these shows where it's like one person wants to get married and the other person doesn't want to get married probably should end in a breakup, but we get to watch it on, like play out on reality TV. Uh, I'm in. I'll watch that. Um, I think that comes out May 30th or something like that. I think it's yeah. about that time. I think so, um, yeah. And there's a lot of other good reality ones coming this month, too, because we've got um, season six of Selling Sunset is dropping in May. We've got mm-hmm. season two of Barbecue Showdown, which if you're looking for like a new food show, maybe not like a baking one, but hey, it's something in the food vein. Um, and then we also have Queer Eye season seven is coming this May as well. So I think it's definitely, there's a lot of, a lot of good shows and a lot of good options, just maybe not those big flashy ones people might be you know waiting for still um, the marquee title or whatever yeah exactly i mean but june is going to be really huge we've got the witcher manifest is confirmed for the beginning of june so i think this will be kind of that last quietish month before we really get into what's going to be a crazy summer yeah the summer looks big it looks like the fall might be a uh, september october might be a little bit uh I don't know, lesser. And then I think that they should finish out the year pretty strong. There's a lot of stuff um, coming out. Lupin also just got uh, announced. So that's another one. It's coming out in October uh, for season yeah. three. Okay, so we've got some other... Oh, Heartstopper. What was that? Was that... That one's coming in August. Yeah, that was what I... Then, I, uh... I knew that was August. There's some rumors One Piece is coming in August, but unconfirmed on that front so we'll have to wait for the official netflix announcement there um yeah, a lot of good stuff coming I, i'm really it's just continued to be surprising how they're announcing so much stuff earlier than because we used so i mean we would get the list and we would literally be reacting to it on this podcast because <laughs> yeah. there were so many things like we literally found out they were coming when that list dropped and it's like oh there's a new season coming in two weeks or less than that and suddenly it's funny like to see them changing like they're dropping so much news I mean, even we haven't gotten the official release date, but like they just dropped new photos from the crowns next season that's coming in, yeah. in the fall. And so it's so on Netflix like of them to be giving us such a heads up of what's coming in some of these months ahead. But I'll take it. It gives us time to like look forward to some of these things and build up hype. 
Yeah, I'm with it. It makes sense to do that. I feel like that's we already know like the Disney movies that are coming out in like 2027 or something like that. So it makes sense for Netflix to give us a couple months heads up. Um, we've got a couple non Netflix originals uh, coming in in May that are worth pointing out. We've got all the Austin Powers movies. You'll see those in the top 10. Uh, the first two seasons of Rugrats, um, Pitch Perfect, the new season of All American, that's the fifth season. And then Heartland, Heartland fans, stand up. Heartland season 15 drops in May. I feel like people have been waiting for Heartland season 15 for like seven years. I mean, it's not seven, but it's a lot. It's a long time. <laughs> yeah, what's interesting with this one is I believe Netflix is still somehow behind in getting the seasons because I believe season yeah. 16 is already out there too. Um, and that's, I think, what's throwing people off is from what I've gathered, season 15 aired stateside on a network called Up TV. So some people have watched it if they had that channel. So if you have been waiting for it, it's coming finally. We don't know when season 16 will drop, but that's something I think of the 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 non Netflix originals. I think All American season five will probably be a big one. Um, I feel like that's a show that got the same push as like Riverdale of like mm -hmm. that Netflix effect. Um, and it's actually the one and only Netflix, uh, CW show that's been renewed. So you can watch season five and enjoy it knowing that another season is coming because uh, it's the first and only CW show as of the recording of this podcast that has been renewed for the next season. So I think that'll definitely probably pop into the top 10 once it arrives in late May. Uh, with season five, I won't give spoilers for those who have not caught it yet, but it's it's been a season it's been full of ups and downs and all the feels uh-oh i don't watch the show <laughs> but i know it's popular it's gonna jump right to number one guaranteed um yeah so i guess that that's about all the time that we've got uh for day i don't think we missed anything but if we did let us know thanks for listening